Okay, this is a video about a lot of different skills. Um, this is about clipping masks, and if you remember from Illustrator, we can um, mask one layer to another beneath it, right? So we only see the part that um, you know attaches to that layer. So, so let's look at that. We have this penguins here, and so I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of penguins, right? Because I don't really want the background copy. Um, I'll even just trash the background copy. Um, so I'm going to change the text here, and uh, right, just like Illustrator, I can type some text, right? And I'll type penguins. Now I'm going to go into free transform and make it bigger. And why can I do that? Because text is actually still a vector object, even in Photoshop. Even though Photoshop is mostly a raster environment, uh, it can handle certain vector objects. And we'll see that a couple different ways here. So I have this and um, I want the penguins to mask to, to this. So I'll drag the layer above now, there's a couple ways to do this. What I generally do is, right at the seam of two layers, I hold down Command and Option, and you notice the cursor become like this. Another way to do it is to control click or right click on the layer and say Create Clipping Mask, right? And so now you see here, the penguins, I can and I can move them independently, right? But they stay masked to this text. Um, same here, I could go move the this around, right? Um, so, so what this is, I, I've done a mask, right? And this is nice and handy. Now I can do all kinds of things here too. I can, um, you know, we learned adjustment layers. Maybe I'll take the U saturation, bring it down all the way. Maybe then I'll add a, a solid color and I'll turn it, uh, I'll make it this color and uh, change that blending mode, right? And now, um, there can be a problem if you have a lot of layers beneath. If you need to make it sure it stays to that layer, you can go in and, and mask each of these layers so that they only stay on. So you saw that it was really imperative with the color fill that we wanted to just keep it on the mask. So if you notice in the layers palette, you see this little arrow pointing down, right? Um, and so we can do that. Uh, now, uh, what other interesting things? We can do tons of interesting things once we go through here. Um, so this is layer masking. You can stop watching the video now, but if you want some extra skills, um, here, are some, here are some. Um, so one thing I could do is I can make a copy of this. So I, I hold down shift and I grab all these layers here and I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to merge these two together. Right click merge layers or command E is the quick key. Right? And now I have a I've made a copy. Now this copy is rasterized. I can't res, res it up because see when you see this text in the layers palette like that you know it's it's still a, um, uh, a a vector object and I could do something like image image rotation flip vertical right and I can start turning it into a, a, a drop shadow. Move it down below um, oops I must have flipped too many things uh, visually there somehow. I'm gonna go into the history palette and reverse that out. Um, but actually, uh, so that's something that's interesting. One thing I guess I should have probably showed you too is that speaking of vector objects, right, we have these, we can draw circles just like in Illustrator. Um, they're called, these are called live shape properties. There's actually a pen tool and everything. You can do a lot that you can do in Illustrator and create vector. Is it very practical? Probably not, right? Um, but here, right, I can actually mask this. So I'm going to make a copy of the penguins here, drag this up, right, and put the mask in, right? And so I've masked the penguins here like that. Again, that was just the same thing I did with the text, just masking. Um, oops, somehow I, I, I deleted these uh, these masks, right? Um, so these are all just different skills for masking. Um, again, I could, I could do a million different things here to show you. Um, let's say I wanted to change the background and I'm gonna fill this. So I'm gonna show you the, the paint bucket tool Right, the paint bucket tool over here, it's behind the gradient. If you have the gradient, I made a new blank layer and I'm gonna fill it. This is a different way than using a, a color fill layer. Um, and put that to the back. I'm gonna take this color fill and I'm going to um, maybe add a new brightness contrast adjustment. I'll make it a little brighter. Um, and I don't want it filling the background, right? So I'll, I'll affect this right like that. Um, some more interesting things, uh, if you look at this little FX in the layers palette, maybe I want to put in a drop shadow, right, and we see preview, I'm not really seeing much going on because I have the wrong layer selected, so let me grow, go make sure I'm on the text layer, and now let me go to drop shadow, right, and so you start to see this drop shadow, maybe I'll hit bevel emboss, and if you notice the, the changes on the thing here, 
Um, lastly, I'll, again, I started to do this, but then I, I wanted to show the shapes. I'll drag these all into the new layer, hit Command-E to bring them down, to show you that it's different. Edit, transform, flip vertical, right? I'm going to move this layer down below, right? So it's over here. Uh, I'll go into free transform and I'll select perspective and I'll kind of have this come out. I'll go to free transform again, bring it here, uh, add a layer mask. Now I'm going to use a gradient with a layer mask. So, so you see I have to be working on the layer mask and remember it can only be in black and white. So I've selected this gradient I have as a normal linear gradient and as I draw it out, whoops, we probably want it to go this way. Right? See, I can start playing with effects like this, and something like this, I, I, you should really start looking them up online if you have, if you envision you want to do something like this. But I'll make a separate video addressing gradients.